Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The extreme hemispheres of this planet, like the Arctic region, are one of the most challenging terrains to survive, conduct research in, and especially project national security and defense. However, when it comes to the U.S. military, there are a few unique technologies that help them operate through these icy regions effectively. One way to operate in the challenging polar conditions is to upgrade or enhance the existing machines adapting to the specific requirements of the area. For instance, the C-130 cargo aircraft designed by Lockheed and capable of using unprepared runways for takeoffs and landings. It was originally developed as a troop, med-evac, and cargo transport aircraft. Nevertheless, when the terrain changed to icy conditions, a polar version of the C-130, known as the LC-130, was introduced for the United States Air Force. One of its unique upgrades consists of the ski-equipped landing gear, which enables safe and smooth operations on snow or icy surfaces. These retractable skis allow the aircraft to land on both conventional and icy runways by managing the friction during landing on frosty terrain. The plane can carry nearly 42,000 pounds of cargo without refueling. It cruises at 292 knots boasting a wingspan of 132.7 feet. The aircraft is also used to transport and deploy military snowmobiles, which allow extending the reach of the American Arctic Angels in environments that would normally take days to cover on foot. This, in turn, enables them to infiltrate deep into the enemy area and conduct the assigned mission with greater efficiency. Loading and unloading the snowmobiles is performed using a makeshift system consisting of rubber mats that are placed in the cargo bay of the aircraft to protect the bay's flooring from the skis. During extraction, the ramp is lowered and the operator drives the vehicle out of the aircraft. The U.S. Marine Corps also conducts various exercises, such as Arctic cold weather and mountain warfare training, and military-to-military -military engagements in cold conditions of Alaska. The training enhances overall interoperability of the U.S. Marine Corps with allies and partners. For this purpose, they are transported to these regions using special polar ferries, which also help in deploying the various vehicles and equipment used by them on their mission.
Operating in extreme cold weather is not for the faint of heart. There is always a risk that this life-threatening experience can lead to medical emergencies and casualties. For this reason, the U.S. paratroopers participate in exercise swift response. Soldiers wearing complete Arctic white camouflage uniforms with the Arctic sustainment packing list jump off the airplane refining the tactics, techniques, and procedures within the exercise. The training helps successfully operate in remote and extreme winter conditions and overcome both environmental and military challenges. As part of the exercise, Medical personnel deal with mock injuries in relation to paratroopers jumping into Arctic and subarctic conditions and transport them for medical assistance using snowmobiles. The Arctic paratroopers, also called as Spartan Brigade, operate in an environment which nearly records negative 40 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Paratroopers transported by the C-130s and C-17s land within the drop zone and immediately prepare their tactical equipment. They also recover their parachutes before moving to their assembly areas. The Spartan Brigade is the only airborne infantry brigade combat team in the Arctic and Pacific theaters, providing the combat commander with the unique capability to project an expeditionary force by air. Another significant exercise conducted by the U.S. military is the Reconnaissance Selection and Occupation of Position Training, or RSOP, where teams are used to survey and assess the viability of new deployment locations. The purpose of the training is to move an air defense artillery unit from one position to another for it to be able to deliver effective fire to accomplish its mission. This can be done using several methods, depending on dry or icy land operations. Ground reconnaissance is one of the most accurate methods. The route can be evaluated for trafficability, obstacles, and dangerous areas using heavy vehicles and metal detectors. However, the method of covering the distances over potential routes and checking alternate positions is time-consuming. When it comes to operating in cold conditions, some military vehicles, like the U.S. Marine M1 Abrams tank, also put up an incredible show. For instance, on the 30th of January, 2017, the President of Poland formally welcomed American soldiers during a ceremony at Karlike Range. Testing combat capabilities of the M1 Abrams in icy conditions during a combined arms live fire exercise between the two nations was the culmination of the ceremony. The U.S. Marines tank crews have also partnered with the Norwegian Telemark Battalion on learning techniques of driving these tracked vehicles in winter conditions on a slippery track.
Arctic regions make great hiding places due to sea ice covering submarines, making it nearly impossible for aircraft to identify. The same sea ice, however, makes it extremely difficult for submariners to communicate above the surface. Therefore, whenever these enormous chunks of metal have to resurface, they must be able to break through the ice. In preparation for resurfacing, the U.S. Navy conducts a program known as Ice-X, or Ice Exercise. Ice-X allows the U.S. Navy to assess its operational readiness in the Arctic and gain advanced understanding of the specific environment. Field agents are sent out onto a huge, white icy field to help a submarine break through the ice. First, they mark the location where the submarine will surface and measure the thickness of the ice using shovels. They then use core drills to create a hole in the surface once they have discovered the region of thin ice. This is followed by an acoustic beacon inserted into the hole for the submarine to track it and confirm that the ice is thin enough to surface. Once ready to surface, the submarine rises from several feet below to top in about a few seconds. Once above the surface, sailors aboard a submarine push ice off the sail, and the field crew use chainsaws and other tools to hack away loose blocks of ice near the hatches to allow access. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. As part of the Ice X in 2022, the U.S. Navy brought together divers and two American submarines, the USS Pasadena and USS Illinois, to train in launching torpedoes as well as finding and evading enemy submarines. Once torpedoes are shot, the search and recovery team go under the ice to find them. The next step is drilling a hole in the ice and entering the water. Weights are attached to the torpedo's tail to help convert the buoyancy under the ice from positive to neutral. Once the neutral buoyancy is achieved, brackets with wires are attached to the top and bottom of the torpedo's body. The retrieval is completed when a chopper hoists the torpedo out of the water. Despite freezing temperatures, global warming has played its part in the region, becoming one of the fastest warming places on the planet, making it more accessible and sensitive closer to the borders. Training in the Arctic provides the U.S. military an opportunity to increase its capability and readiness in the unique environment. While continuing to establish best practices in its goal to maintain peace and stability in the region. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.